Hey, thanks for joining us at the Intact Beyond Transformation Series. I'm Nathan Dale, CEO of Intact Beyond. We're a collective of subject matter experts who have all come together to help communities and employees get through this time and thrive beyond. Our facilitator is Nicole Watson and our expert today is Mark Hodgson. Mark is a CEO, a coach, mentor and author. Mark's going to be talking us through how we respond to COVID, uh, how we can become a leader as we come out of COVID and how to build confidence and resilience through this time. I'll throw over to the guys now and thanks very much again for joining us. Hi, my name's Nicole Watson and I'll be facilitating today's deep dive with Mark Hodgson, who will be talking about leadership and resilience. Hi, Mark. How are you today? Hey, Nicole. I'm very well. Thank you very much. Good, good. Thanks so much for um, spending your time to support Intact Beyond um, and the working community. Um, it, like, obviously, it's been a very uncertain time at the moment. A lot of people are being forced in, into working from home. How has this time impacted you, Mark? Well, it's it's interesting actually. I've come, if I'm honest, I'm, I've been a bit ahead of the curve, um, as we'll talk about in my presentation. I've uh, I'm an ex corporate leader, and I left the corporate workplace almost ten years ago. So I've actually been working from home or largely from home for the best part of uh, of a decade. So um, the reality is, the whole COVID thing has actually created very few differences for me. Um, What's interesting to me watching everyone sort of thrust into the work from home space is there's, uh, as I'm sure you're probably finding out viewers, uh, there's a lot more to it than getting a bit of broadband organised and a monitor and, uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, a whole, there's a whole lot of stuff to actually be technically connected to actually being, um, I guess, mentally connected, but also most importantly, um, productive from a, a, a work perspective and there's a whole load of work as a lot of you are finding in um, in getting to that space so it's something I've been doing for a long time um, I run a, a leadership consultancy business um, it's relatively small and what that means is you've got a very there's a very tight relationship between uh, outcomes uh, creating outcomes that you can actually you know, ultimately send an invoice to people for and people pay you um, so you, you become very outcome focused and um, one of obviously the the largest biggest challenges of working in any organization but certainly working from home when it's fractured if you're part of a team it's now displaced geographically is actually creating those outcomes so that's a big part of the work um, that uh, a lot of people will be doing here and what i'm going to try and do today in my presentation uh, is to share some insights and thoughts about i guess the leadership aspects and really the self-leadership aspects that we need to take on board uh, to prepare ourselves to be as productive, as engaged, as motivated, and ultimately to create those outcomes um, that we need to, to basically perform uh, personally and also professionally in our businesses. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, so this is this presentation, it's going to be around somewhere between 50 and 60 minutes. Um, there's quite a lot of content. Um, because the way I work when I work with uh, with teams and leaders and, and motivated professionals and individuals is I really want you to actually get a lot of stuff and, and ideas that are actually going to challenge your thinking. So I call uh, I call this part of, uh, um, I call this a time to shine manifesto. I've got a book that's called Time to Shine. And what I'm going to say in the next 50, 60 minutes, um, hopefully there's a lot of ideas in there for you. But what I really want you to do, whether you agree or disagree, uh, with some of the ideas I'm putting forward in this manifesto style, what I really want you to do is actually think about some of the ideas because that's the, as leaders, we need to think, we need to ch need to be challenged, we need to challenge back. And if we can do that in the next hour, then I think that's a, hopefully a really good use of your time and will help you. So what we're actually going to talk about is this, um, how we need to shift our leadership dial to thrive through Corona, because there's a lot going on, isn't there? So welcome. Um, fundamentally, uh, hey, we've had five years of change in five weeks, which is extraordinary. It's unparalleled. None of us have ever seen it before. Um, but that asks some big questions of us, doesn't it? And that's what I'm going to try and address today, because the question we've all got to ask ourselves is how must we respond to lead ourselves and also to lead others to be successful, uh, both during this current period of, of lockdown if you like but also and just as importantly to move out, out of the other side of that lockdown so we're ready to thrive in 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 the post-corona world um 
we each in us have probably four, four, four different kind of main archetypes that we can identify with. And, and what I really need us to do is to be reaching for the, uh, the hero inside ourselves. And I'm hopefully going to give you some ideas about that. The hero rises up, answers the call and saves the day. And that heroic self lives in all of us. And we really need to try and grab him or her. We also uh, may want need to be the guide. And the guide is the guide is the, that person in, in, in films and, um, and stories uh, who helps others. So Obi-Wan Kenobi or Gandalf. So that's the guide in us, helps others to win, asks how we can help other people and transforms through adversity. So those are the two archetypes really that we really want to be kind of bringing out in ourselves to lead ourselves to win um, as leaders through the corona thing. There's two other archetypes we've got to be aware of though. They live in all of us and right now you might be seeing some of that as well and we just need to make sure we don't see too much of this. The first one is the, the archetype of the victim. The one who seeks to be rescued is a drag on others and has that external focus. It's all bad, everything's bad, it's picking on me. And then the last one, the last archetype, the worst one is the villain. And as we know, we've all got a bit of a villain in us occasionally. We can be destructive, we can be vengeful, we can be negative and we can take down people and projects so there's a lot to kind of be mindful of so what are we going to do in or say around in the time together we're going to talk about really what's going on i'm going to give a bit of context to to where we are and where we found ourselves and as i said that massive acceleration compression of of change um ask and hopefully give you some ideas to answer the question how must we how must you respond to this crisis because it really is a defining moment i believe for most of us in our in our leadership uh, and, and and in our professional and personal lives i'll talk a lot about how we can build the confidence the energy but also the resilience to get the best out of ourselves to access as i talked about that that heroic self and then i'll share with you a model i call it the corona leader model and it's a blueprint i think for success and we'll talk about some of the elements in that um, and how we can how we can pull on that to help you to grow and thrive and your team to grow and thrive through this. A little bit of my backstory. So I live on the northern beaches of, of Sydney. That's me. My son Felix is a is a fourth year carpentry apprentice. My beautiful wife Nikki. She is a, a drug and alcohol uh, counsellor. And my my beautiful daughter Izzy. She's at Melbourne University currently studying to be a teacher. Um, one of the lovely things I, I, I ticked a bucket list um, thing last last year, and I actually played. I still play rugby, um, <laughs> getting better by the year in my in my mind's eye. Anyway. <laughs> and uh, I had a great moment last year that I actually played uh, with my son for the first time. So that was a, that was a major moment. I think I've just scored a try in this picture. That's bound to be just what's happened. I'm not of sure. Course, um, sure. I also row surfboats. <laughs> Absolutely, no question, Nicole. Uh, also, I row surf boats, which if, if you don't know, they're seven metres long. Uh, they're fabulous. Um, and it's such a great exercise, but also, as I'll come on to talk about, a great way, great team camaraderie piece. And there we are. We, we stuff pretty good. And I, I, always, I always joke about this picture. And I, I, I say to the girls, back off, chicks. These roosters are already taken. What a magnificent body of men, hey? Uh, we're called the Warwood, um, Warwood Crusties. And, yeah, we were third best in the country at uh, Last year which is pretty cool very proud of that um, I also have done some I've also done some um, some work in the past uh, working for Lifeline as a as a telephone crisis support worker so I've got a bit of an insight into some of the mental health aspects of, of life and leadership and, and what we're seeing aren't we with the corona piece is we're seeing a compression of a whole load of things and all these elements are coming together so absolutely there's a mental health issue uh, and, and factors relating to what's going on at the moment. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the resilience piece. Uh, I do wear clothes, however, you'll be pleased to know. Um, I'm a leadership expert. I come from the UK. I've lived in, the Euro in, in, in Europe uh, and I've been in Australia for the last 20 years uh, where I came out of a, a, a professional background in media and media sales and slowly over time became more and more interested in leadership, leading teams. I did a... Um, uh, a change management uh, uh, qualification and, and learnt, uh, learnt, of course, that, that, that uh, the change isn't actually managed. It's led, and we'll talk about that. Uh, I also, also, um, uh, I also, um, uh, in my last corporate role, which was a business transformation, um, uh, where, where I turned, uh, I led a team to to, um, to turn a million dollar loss into a four million dollar profit in three years. Um, 
I, I also got uh, I had my first mentor at the age of about at the, about the age of 44. So that really helped me to fall in love with the idea of leadership and change and the power of mentors to help bring out the greatness in us. So today, um, as I left corporate about 10 years ago, because having led that amazing transformation, uh, myself and my team were fired. We were made redundant. And I thought, bugger this, I've, I'm over this, uh, this corporate thing. Um, I was in love with leadership, in love with change, in love with uh, the idea of running my own consultancy. Um, and so today I'm a mentor, I'm a speaker, I'm an author. And since 2010, I've been helping leaders and their teams to build the confidence, skills and mindsets. And all, all three are very important. They're, they're, they're needed for high performance in a fast changing world. And boy, have we got a fast changing world right now. So what is going on? And it's interesting, the next three or four slides, um, as I'm a keynote speaker, the, the next three or four slides are the ones I've been using for probably the last couple of years in talking about how change is happening. Um, I've talked about how the world has changed. Have you noticed? I talk about this idea of a global market. Um, I talked about this idea of the millennial market, which, you know, which we will, everyone gets kicked around, doesn't it? And the fact that 70% of the global workforce will be, um, will be uh, millennials by 2025. I talk about this idea of a social market uh, in the 2016 US elections. It's estimated that 80% of Americans got their news, inverted commas, from social media like Facebook and Google. And of course, right now we know we're all so integrated, aren't we, and kind of obsessed and hooked in to social media, whether it be LinkedIn as professionals or Facebook or Instagram and our whole world, isn't it? It just kind of is kind of is kind of focused on the on these bad and these bad boys. So we have a social market. I talk about the new world of work, which is really much very much this series is about the new world of work. I talked about hot desking for all and this trend for everyone moving more towards sort of more um, remotely um, remote access working. And, all, and I talked about the comedy of errors of, of, of the, in, the, in, the, in Australia we've had over the last decade, fast changing, irrespective of your politics, those fast changing politicians. And then, we had, then we've got the, the latest prime minister. Was it, would he be any good? Who knows? Uh, I talked about the, um, the trust index in free fall. Uh, if you don't know about it, there's a thing called the Edelman Trust Index. And fundamentally, it's a global study that really asks people, what, what is your level of trust in things like institutions, um, in the media, in politicians, and pretty much across the, across, the, across the world, and certainly in Australia, no different. Yeah, it's gone off a cliff. Our trust in all those things has is, is, is just fallen massively. But then, of course, so that's what I talked about, but then, bang, COVID-19 comes along, smash, world in fear. And it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm, we're recording this um, towards the back end of April. It is only, I think it's uh, about six weeks ago, six weeks ago, I came back from a holiday in New Zealand. Uh, we did a motorbike tour with some, with some mates around the South Island of New Zealand, which was glorious. And this thing was kind of, you know, coming into view, that's when everyone was fighting over toilet rolls. But really, even then, I don't think we really understood what was happening and the speed with which it was happening. And I think of those, you know, those old Wile E. Coyote uh, uh, cartoons where someone's standing at the bottom of a canyon and this rock gets just dropped on the head and they don't see it. It's been a bit like that, hasn't it? So we've now had the COVID-19 world in fear. And that's what I've said. We've now got that massive compression of change. The reason I showed you those slides is to say, the trends that I've been identifying and others, I mean, these aren't unique, but this trend identification, these trends have been in place for the last several years. What has happened now is we've had a massive compression and a massive acceleration of those trends. Uh, that's the five years of change in five weeks. Um, in, in, in change and leadership terms, we talk of this idea of VUCA. Uh, it's a really good framework and VUCA stands for volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. And I know if I, if I'd love to be able to speak with each of you individually, but if I could, I know that I could probably, we could probably talk about the specifics where you're sitting in your business, in your industry, with your team, everything's more volatile than it's ever been. So uncertainty is one of the biggest um, factors within the current lockdown and within what's coming in the post corona We just don't know. And as human beings, we're not good at uncertainty. We tend to go into fear and make ourselves small. Um, and what we actually need to do is make ourselves big and lean out and actually go, move forward and be brave. And every, uh, every sort of bone of our body is going, no, 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 let's, let's, let's run away from this. Let's make ourselves safe. Everything is more complex, isn't it? Um, 
there's almost ever been uh, and and one of the claret one of the qualities as leaders we need to develop is actually the ability to be brief and concise and to simplify the complex and then again we've got this idea of ambiguity there is so much ambiguity right now what does the next you know even four weeks look like let alone the four months or four weeks we just don't know and again as leaders one of the things we need to do is to lead our people through ambiguity that's to keep moving forward when we don't necessarily know what the process is so that's VUCA and I mean VUCA fundamentally um, it's with the current with the COVID uh, piece with our five weeks in five years your know, five years of change in five weeks that acceleration fundamentally we've got VUCA on steroids and understandably that is asking so many questions of us as leaders and really that's what we're trying to try and explore today how can we kind of equip ourselves to to, to cope with that and not only cope, hopefully thrive through that. Mm. Um, I mean, really, we do, um, make, make, no, um, make no mistake. I'm really clear on this, I'm 55. Um, I've been around the block a few times. I've lived in different countries. I've worked in multiple industries and multiple geographies. This is without a shadow of the doubt, not even not anything comes close, the biggest shift that we will know. Uh, and I think it will certainly, certainly um, occupy the rest of my professional career. And there's very much a pre corona world of even six or seven weeks ago and there's a post corona world and what we need to do now is be very clear about how we can equip ourselves and others to thrive in the post corona world and the pre corona world very simplistic this is a contrast frame this is a really good it's just a sort of very higher high order kind of idea and this is a really good tool you might want to use for yourself within your teams within your own market sector and map out what was the old thing and what's the new thing and work out because it's a really good work a really good way to map out what was then what's now what's next and how do i go from what was then to what we need to move towards so it's a great idea so pre-corona it was about globalization free movement made in china i think we were very self-focused a lot of it was about stuff and acquisition complexity as i say was everywhere red green tape a lot of idealism like you know climate change and uh, diversity things like that in a post-corona world, and again, these are early stabs, and obviously we'll refine this as, as refine this as we get more information. We really go from globalization to more of a nation state, we'll border control, we're able to talk about the, the borders, the lockdown, from made in China to homegrown. And I don't think that's a racist comment, I just think we're looking for supply security. From self to family, and one of the wonderful things I think most of us have had is so much family time, and we'll talk about that. We can have too much family time, I know. Uh, we'll talk about from stuff to experiences, from complexity to simplicity, from red and green tape to nation building. You can imagine some extraordinary projects of development, uh, building big stuff um, coming on and there'll, there'll be lots of um, you know, hopeful opportunities to come out of that. And I think we'll go from idealism to pragmatism, but either way, it doesn't matter. I could be wrong. These are some early ideas and I say it's a great idea for you to play with this kind of contrast frame tool in your world. What we do know, it's gonna be very, very, very different and we need to adapt quickly. Um, so the post-corona world will demand different things of us as leaders. Now, I'm very aware I'm throwing around this word leader, and one of the, and I, I, I mentor about 30, 40 people, uh, yeah, 30, 40 leaders every year, um, and smart professionals and teams, I work with a whole lot of people, and I know when I say the term leader, a lot of people don't self-perceive themselves as a leader. Um, and I think what, if there's one thing you take out of all of this content I'm going to share with you um, is the idea that we're all leaders, whether you, whether you uh, work for yourself, whether you have a part of a small team, whether you're part of a huge multinational, we all get to be leaders wherever we are. Uh, and certainly fundamentally, I think the big, the big challenge that we can rise to out of this is to understand that we need to lead ourselves into this best future for our for ourselves for our organizations for our families but also to create our best possible careers we need to lead ourselves so don't rely on any kind of formal position or position title um, start with the idea that we all need to lead ourselves and we can we can all be leaders so when i say this idea of leaders i don't want you to not hear anything. oh no i'm not a leader i'm just a this or i'm just a that we're all leaders so the post corona world will demand different things of us as leaders. We no longer know the rules. Everything's out of the window. What got, and certainly what got us to now, or six weeks ago when I was in New Zealand, you know, looking at the scenery going, oh, this is all gorgeous, ain't going to get us to next. Whatever that post corona world looks like, whether I'm right or wrong, I don't know. Um, but next certainly is going to be massively different. Um, 
And it's a very human and understandable reaction that we feel inadequate and overwhelmed. So we need a new kind of leadership, don't we? And here's the thing, people, it starts with you and it starts with me. It starts with all of us. So I don't abdicate responsibility for this. Don't think someone else is going to come and rescue us. Don't play the victim as we spoke about. Take responsibility. You need to be find a way to unlock your inner hero that we spoke about at the beginning. So it starts with you. And an interesting uh, frame that I'll use that I'll share with you that might help you into this um, is to think about time in maybe a slightly different way than we us usually do. So the Greeks have two words for time. They probably have more than that, but the two key words, they have this idea of chronos time and chronos time is the time we are used to it. So from chronos comes things like chronometer, chronological, that's kind of calendar time. It's time, wristwatch time. It's that you're late for this. It's this, this webinar started at 11 o'clock. It's that kind of time, the time that we kind of run our lives by and kind of get measured by. That's cool, but I think there's a second, uh, second um, sense of time the Greeks use, and they call this kiros time. And that is more about what, it's, it's a situational time or a, se or a season, a seasonal time. It's, a, it's that sort of time, it's the sense of time we kind of feel more in our gut, like, hey, it's time for me to step up. It's time for me to change jobs. It's time, to make, time for me to get married. It's time for me to have a baby. It's time for us to settle. Some version of that, that there's no specific calendar thing that ever is right now it's time to have a baby for example and now it's time to move countries but you kind of there's that thing that in your gut you kind of you know yeah you know what it's this we kind of that we're just going around we've been around here before i want something new okay and the reason i say that is i think right now is a time for you to reach and if you're feeling it in your gut that kind of gut time that kiros time now's the time so you know now's the opportunity to seize the time to reinvent so don't just get stuck in repeating patterns of behavior or repeating patterns of thought. Now is an absolutely a brilliant time for you to say, you know what, out on the other side of this, which starts yesterday, it starts today, we're gonna to move forward. I can reinvent, I can grow, I can step up, rather than kind of cast yourself in maybe some old clothes that are no, no longer relevant or no longer true. So Kiros time is a really interesting frame that may help you, um, as I say, and I keep repeating this idea, access your own inner hero. That, hero, that heroic self lives in all of us, um, and often we struggle to bring her or him out. And Kiros time's a good, good, a good way into that. Because chances are, you know, you need to transform. I think we all need to transform. I mean, Nicole asked me the question, you know, how, how, how do I find working from home? Well, I spent, you know, I've, I've done a 10 year apprenticeship of doing this and it's, it's, it's very difficult, but it takes a long time to get, but now I'm good at it. But I needed to transform and learn and unlearn a whole lot of stuff. As I say, and that's a big part of what we're going to go through as part of this overall you know, um, conversation that Intact has framed. You know, how do we actually do this well, not just in the lockdown period, but beyond and whatever that new world of, of work looks like. So chances are you need to transform. Um, and what I've got is I, I've got a model I call the Corona Leader model. And I'm, and it, I'm going to talk through... Um, some elements of it. There are five elements overall. I haven't got time to go or, or go through all of them. Uh, there's, there's a lot of thinking in there. But the ones I really wanted to talk about today um, are self-leadership, which is about confidence, change leadership, which is about resilience, and I'll also touch on thought leadership, which is about how we need to build our influence um, so that we can can um, can kind of achieve things by, by by building our professional and personal brains. And the other two, which I won't have time to touch on, are neuro leadership, which is understanding how our brains and how we can rewire our thinking. And then finally, community leadership. And really, it's it's it, yeah, I, it's funny. I've had this model rolling around for a few years now. And then when I when I fit it over the Corona experience, this is this is just spot on. Um, so it's a really, I think it's a really good frame. I'm really, I'm really proud of this model. I think it nails a lot of the overarching things that we need to start, we need to think about. I mean, so as I say, I'm just going to drill down on, on two or three of them because we've only got uh, an hour. And as you can probably work out, I can talk. So we could be doing this three hours, but I'm only going to give you one. <laughs> so we'll start with self-leadership. And as I say, self-leadership is all about confidence. Uh, there's a great uh, quote by Viktor Frankl, who was a, um, uh, uh, he was a Holocaust survivor and he was imprisoned, I think, I believe in Auschwitz. And he said, when we are no longer able to change a situation, 
we are challenged to change ourselves. And that's kind of where we are, isn't it? Um, yeah, and I reckon it's your time. As I said, this Kiros time, find our inner hero, reinvent, recalibrate, reset. That's the opportunity we all have to come out of the other side of this, you know, kind of I, I, this dreadful event, but also exciting event. Okay, it's both, isn't it? There's a, there's a kind of really weird tension between those two because both those things are true. It's terrible, but it's also exciting. So really, we've got an opportunity to reinvent. So I reckon it's your time. Uh, and a big idea that, uh, that I share that I hopefully will help you find some different elements and aspects and motivation in yourself to actually to shine, to be that heroic self, um, is the idea that in the, in the age of robots, big data and artificial intelligence, it's actually our humanity that's our point of difference as leaders. So you know, what we need to do um, is to bring our whole game into our leadership uh, and into our workplace and into our team leading, our team building. So I think what that what does that look like? And I got I use this love I love this image, this lovely picture of the mosaic. And you know, mosaic obviously is made up of lots of little pieces, isn't it? And we tend, I think, to sell ourselves short as leaders. Often we only bring a little bit to us, and we bring that bit that we think people want and need, and that is professional. But I think if we can bring more of ourselves, and we're seeing that now in some of these beautiful things that are happening happening through this lockdown period, the creativity, the innovation, the clever connections and so forth, um, then it's really powerful. So we need to paint a picture of the vision uh, you have for your business, your group or your team, and then take your people, and your people might be two people, it might be one person, or it might be a hundred or a thousand, I don't know, but take your people on a growth journey to make it a reality. So the way I explain this, I've got a, uh, a model and I, 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 you know, what most people do um, is they trade or they show up in basically as, as subject matter experts. And that's about, uh, that's about their expertise, which is what they know and their experience of where I've been. And when you, bring, when you bring those two things together, what you do is position yourselves as a credible subject matter expert. And that's okay, um, but it's a bit dry, isn't it? We actually need to bring a third element. And that's our essence. So the exper expertise is what I know. The experience is where I've been. But the essence piece is who I be. And that's that kind of personality piece. When we bring that into conjunction, then not only are we credible, but we're also authentic and we're convicted. And that's really powerful. I mean, the, the expertise really piece is really about what we think. The experience piece is what we do. But I think the, the real power and probably the deficit for most was the bit that most people don't bring in is their essence. And that's the B piece. And if we zoom down on that a little bit more, the B piece, so what does that mean? That means as leaders, we need to be much more um, sort of uh, sort of human, human centered, which is what we're seeing. And that's, 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 um, that's about having, you know, thinking through things like um, having our feelings, hopes, beliefs, desires, and ethics, our humours, our strengths. So we're displaying all of that. Um, and also as leaders displaying our qualities of vulnerability, that's very important. Empathy, the ability to connect and understand other people's um, worlds and see the world through their eyes. The courage to, I think, move into the future. As I said, the future, the future is challenging for us. And also inclusivity, not so much in a diversity thing, um, nothing wrong with diversity, but I think inclusivity, what we're seeing now is there is a much greater, there's great value to be gained from getting learning and input and creativity and ideas and, 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 um, and resources from a very wide range of, of, of assets, if you like, within our networks, not just people in, our formal, in a formal sort of organizational structure. So this, this whole area tends, sweeping generalization, this whole area tends to be underdeveloped in most leaders. They don't, Either they haven't done the thinking or they kind of keep it at home because they don't see it as part of their work and leadership. I think there's a lot of um, the, the upside or, or the value is if, you can, if we can bring the, the, the B piece into conjunction with our expertise and our experience, then a lot of good stuff happens. And, you know, summing that up, and, you know, again, we can go very deep on that. But the top version of that is don't be afraid to show the person inside the leader when you work when you work with your teams and when you when you when you liaise with the people and of course this whole this whole intact initiative um, is a really good example of that isn't it you're seeing we're seeing re we're seeing collaboration we're seeing reaching out to a whole lot of diverse people 
um, to build connections, to build capability, to solve problems collaboratively that we kind of we that probably can't do on our own. So it's a really good example of that. So it's very personalized, very human and, and, and very effective. Yeah, and I, 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 yeah, I think a good, uh, a good framework to, um, to, to think about is, is to look at yourself in the mirror. And I, love, I, love the, I love this picture of the fat guy looking in the mirror. Um, and yeah, we all need to look in the mirror, don't we? Go back, we've got Kira's time, okay? We, we're trying to find her in a hero. Um, now's the time, I think, a real opportunity to be honest with ourselves. So look in the mirror and say, okay, ask some questions. Here's some good questions to ask you. What do you see? What do you like? And I'm not just talking about, oh, I've got nice eyes or my ears, my, my ears are a bit big or a big spool or whatever. But what do you like about the way you show up? You know, what needs to change? You know, and here's a massive, and we've all got a fantastic opportunity now to reinvent, to, to recalibrate, to show up as the different and better version of ourselves. So what needs to change? We need to be honest about that. And then we need to do some work on whatever that is. Um, what is your post-corona vision for the world as i said i've shared a very sort of very very high meta level uh, one but what's yours do you have one have you done that thinking it's a really good thing to do you should be doing that uh, through your marketplace for, for, for in your marketplace in in the business you know we read widely become part of things like this where you'll get new insights new input because just sitting there kind of hoping all this will sort itself out and you'll re-emerge into a world and everyone tells you what to do and how to go you know I think that's quite naive. I think it's unlikely. I think yeah, we're now because most people, because they're anxious, because they're disengaged, because they're physically dislocated, you know, th there is an opportunity for those of us who want to step up and step in. Now's your opportunity to recalibrate, as I said, and, 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 re and, and do so at a, at a better level, at a higher level, at a more heroic level. So what's your vision for the post-corona world? And then the last question is, how can your heroic self show up in the corona crisis and you know we were seeing instances of that but what can you be doing what can you be doing differently what can you be doing better and i'm sure a lot of people on this call are already doing things really well and different but it's such an opportunity isn't it to actually do to 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 to, to, to say to re to recast ourselves and and chance uh, chance our arm a bit fail forward perhaps but take take new opportunities so that's um that's sort of the self leadership piece the second part of the Corona Leader model I wanted to spend a bit of time on is the, is the change leadership piece. And as I said, this is really about fundamentally about resilience because change is hard. As I said, I did a, a degree in the thing and uh, it's called change management. And all, all I learned by the end of it, I learned a lot. It was pretty good. But what I learned is actually the whole, the whole change management market or, or title is rubbish because you don't manage change. You lead change. Um, you know, so we need to become change champions, irrespective of what it says on your job title or where you are, uh, say whether you work for yourself or whether you work for the largest organisation. Well, we all need to become change champions because, uh, you know, in, in, in strict um, change, you know, change theory terms, what we've just had imposed on the whole of the planet is transformational change. It's been imposed, which is yeah, whole whole scale change has been imposed on every business on every business on the planet by an external market condition, which obviously is basically the shutdown, the shutdown of the economy for what, three, six months necessitated by, by the COVID virus. So transformational change imposed. And that's why we've got that five years of change in five weeks, massive compression. So as you can imagine, that creates some dramas, doesn't it? Change is led, not managed. And understanding the change process we're all on, I think is critical. I'm gonna look at this through a couple of lenses. The first, is through the, if you like, a, 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 a mental health lens. Uh, this is a you probably a very, very well known model by a, an academic called uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. And she wrote a book, it's been around for quite a long time. Uh, and it's, and, and, and she, the book was called On Death and Dying. So it's a bit, bit grim. Um, but fundamentally, what she maps in her model is the stages of grief. And what academics in change have actually done and said you know what the, the 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 dynamics of going through change are pretty much exactly the same as those going through physical uh, human grief uh, and so what we see are some clear stages and the, and the axes here on one side we've got we've got energy emotional energy and then across the bottom we've got the integration of change so 
it, it, it always, and it, we can see this this map time and time again. And obviously, COVID is is a massive change event, massive, massive, massive. So there, there are a few stages. The first one is shock and denial. I can't believe it. And even now, isn't it? You say it's only six weeks since this whole thing really accelerated to the point where we go, shit, everything's shutting down. It's going, well, that's kind of crazy. There can be anger. I mean, people losing their jobs, people. You know, it's indiscriminate. Your whole, your whole industry is pretty much, you know, who've done a good job, maybe, um, run really well, good companies, and suddenly they just can't trade and they're in trouble and it's angry. Yeah, so the, the, often you get people trying to bargain for more time, and we're seeing a little bit of that, I suppose, with the Virgin Australia piece. They're trying to get second chances, more funding, some, some version of that. And then you get to the point of depression, disengagement, disenchantment. Yeah, what's the point? And, look, and, look, and that's low energy, okay? And then hopefully as people move through these stages, we get to that point of okay, and and I think we're kind of not too far off this point in Australia. Now we can actually start to see the light at the end of the tunnel, can't we? I think we're not quite sure what it looks like, but we don't think we're going to get any greater levels of lockdown. Um, certainly, in terms of uh, the, 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 we flatten the curve for sure, and the deaths are way, way, way lower than we we we, we feared. So we can now start to look quite, I think optimistically if that's an appropriate word towards uh, an acceptance and moving towards the the, the post corona world i keep talking about but uh, but, but be, 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 you know make no mistake that that change process that's what we're all trying to that's what we're all trying to go through so it's we see that and but and that that shows up as resistance to change um the change curve is a really good model um i say she talks about five stages of grief and loss and i think we can all probably identify with with, it, with these it's a really good conversation starter so it's a good thing to talk about yourself where you know uh, but also with your with your teams it helps slow people locate and progress over time really important point really important point with this this model is that the progress and process is not linear so you don't just go from left to right and out the other side you might go backwards and forwards. So you might go from, you know, might go into depression, get a bit of a lifting, actually, no, it's going to be okay, then fall back and lapse. So it's not, you know, it's not, we don't just go slide through this nicely. But as leaders, our what we need to do is obviously lead ourselves and our teams as swiftly and gracefully and with as much love as we can. But firmly, we need to move along this curve to get them to that point where they're actually ready to re-engage see some bright you know see some you know little green shoots of recovery light at the end of the tunnel some kind of language like that and make sure they're engaged on the productive work they need to do for themselves and for the business to get the thing moving again so that's what we need we need to push with love through the curve um, but understanding this this thing's a really good this this model is really helpful to a lot of people um, we need to make sure that we and the team don't get stuck at any one point that's important so communication is really important helping them create some kind of sense of progression and whatever they're doing is important. So some good questions for you watching this. So ask where are you, be aware of where you are, and also understand that may change and it may change negatively. You might go backwards, but being self-aware, say today I'm, today I'm in a shit place, okay, that's okay. Allow myself to be there for today, but I'm not, I don't want to be here for a week, okay? And then the, the last question, where are your team members? This is a really good tool. So this, this, is, the, this is the change journey we all go through. And of course, the resilience piece is super important to help us such that we can you know, see this in its context, understand where we are and maybe where our team is on this journey, and then do the necessary things that I'm going to talk about that we need to do to give ourselves as much chance as possible of navigating this painful curve. And it's not, there's no way it's not painful. Don't get me wrong. We need to, how do we navigate this painful curve as smoothly, as quickly, and as, as positively as possible because that's change and this is you know, and this curve by the way is why change is so hard because people get stuck um, and as human beings as I said what, yeah, our first instinct is the is usually the flight response make ourselves small roll up in a little fetal ball and hope it's all going to come yeah it's all going to go go away and we come up in a month or six months time and it all goes back to normal and clearly that ain't gonna happen but that's kind of a little human risk survival thing going on so how do we build our resilience for this journey um i'm actually gonna gonna draw on a um uh, so we can use a military military picture picture which is quite yeah i, I usually resist the military thing because it can be it's kind of can be seen as a quite lazy metaphor but i think in the in the instance of where we are with covid it's actually quite 
apt and accurate because we this is yeah this this really is we are at war with this thing um it is the villain we're the heroes we've got to overcome this thing so that we survive in the sense of we survive as leaders we survive as as, as family leaders and we survive as organizations and so we need to equip ourselves and i'm going to draw on a uh, model i put together another model as you know i like models I'm, I'm, i think there's about four or five in the presentation hopefully they'll help you to understand pretty uh, big con concepts at a high level so you can kind of access them and drill down a bit a bit more if you if you need to but there was a thing called the comprehensive soldiers fitness program uh, run by the US Army about 10, 15 years ago. And what they basically found was that, um, and this is the era of, the, this was in the era of a lot of wars in um, Afghanistan and um, I I Iraq. Um, they found that a lot of their, so their, their, their service people were coming home um, with you know, massive post-traumatic tra post stress disorder. And they were, ve they were much more, if you like, susceptible and brittle than they thought. And they realized the reason for it fundamentally they were too reliant on just a couple of couple of pillars of, re, of support if you like one was the physical pillar that kind of fitness that military sort of soldier fitness piece and the second one was the um the, the sort of social pillar of being part of an organization that, that core the esprit de corps you know the marine kind of thing uh, and what they found they're only, not, only relying on two imagine if you're just if you've got a store with the store with two legs then with one of those one or other of those gets uh, gets broken the whole thing falls over so what they what they came up with was with the with the idea that they needed to to, to actually create more support, um, more 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 like more places of, from which people can draw strength in the soldiers. And they came up with five elements. And they were the physical, they were the family, um, the social, the emotional, and the spiritual. And I'll go into each of those in a little bit of detail. But fundamentally, what that did by creating not two but five areas of support, it meant that. That you, we, we were more stable. Imagine a store with five legs, not 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 two. Then if one leg or two legs are taken out, we're still probably going to stand stand up. And what they found by implementing this across the whole, it's basically a positive psychology approach. By implementing a positive psychology approach across the whole of the U.S. Army, they got a massive improvement um, in in the in in the resilience within the soldiers. So they they could take more. Uh, negative experiences and and be able to self-manage as opposed to come back with massive post-traumatic stress disorder so it's like it's like a preventative layer as opposed to just response responsive layer. Uh, and what i've done is put that all into a model um and so we we have perspective sat in the middle so the five elements then and so if we do this builds our resistance. the first one is physical um you know we need to work out. We need to look after. We need to look after our bodies. And it's funny, isn't it? Within this lockdown thing, have you ever seen so many walked dogs or beach walks or people go volunteering to do the shopping? Anything to get out and actually exercise because we feel cooped up. We feel like caged animals, don't we? So the physical piece is really important. You know, the the, um, the you know, exercise, diet, nutrition sleep all those aspects are super super important i haven't got time to do the neuroscience you kind of know this stuff this isn't this is not new news but i think probably in the in the context of leadership i think people kind of miss that you know because it's hard to lead ourselves because it's hard to show up consistently in this you know in this vuca world irrespective of COVID, it's hard yeah you know, you've got to do what i call the self-work you've got to be physically in shape and and, and the other things because if you're not, you, you're just you, you're just not equipping yourself. Yeah, you know, where the energizer bunny, we and one of the way, one of the ways we charge ourselves is with physical exercise. So if you're drinking too much, if you're not exercising, um, if you're out of weight, uh, overweight, and out of shape, you, you really are. It's not it's not it's, it's not a finger waggy judgment call I'm making. I'm saying you're just not you're not giving yourself the best chance to shine, to thrive, to be heroic. So it's a really important element. The second one is family. Now, I, 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 I throw this up with a degree of kind of, um, you know, tongue in cheek, because I know we all have our families, but I mean, and you, you, we, it's great to be connected to our family. Here, my kids in London a few years ago. Um, and uh, of course, right now, there's probably many family members ready to strangle each other because there's a bit too much family. But overall, we, I mean, it has been great, hasn't it? I don't know about you guys, I'm sure, you know, we've had Zoom calls. I've spoken to my, my brother, sister, family members more in the last month than in the last year. And that's got to be a good thing. And when I, when I look at that overall meta piece about we go from self to family, I think that is one, one positive shift that will remain. Maybe not 24-7 lockdown, yeah? 
but certainly, you know, more family time. I think we've realized the value of that. So family is important. And that's, this is what they did. They encouraged the, the, um, the soldiers to, to do more family stuff and involve, you know, involve and brought the families more into the, that kind of, that kind of, uh, that soldiering environment because it creates more diversity and more support for them. The third element is the is the social one and that idea of buddying up and the, I shared with you at the beginning the rowing that I do and I t I'm missing it terribly. Uh, rowing is so awesome one because it's great physical physical exercise two because you're on the ocean and I think there's just something magical isn't it uh, about about the ocean and kind of washing off the day. But the third thing is the social element and we 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 train and row we go we travel all the way all the way across the country. Yeah, five five guys we talk with each other we share our share share our concerns our laughs our problems with each other and so socially that is so important i mean especially coming back to you know, the work from home context as someone who does work from home a lot on his own for a long even even outside of covid and lockdown you know this is so important to me to have that those networks that i can lock into regularly where i can just socialize and i'm, I'm missing that terribly um, uh, so the rowing is, is more about the socialization, I guess, than the physical stuff. So it's a really good example. So socially, it's really important that we've got social networks that we're, 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 we're talking to. And one, one of the things we did, so as I said, I, I, I play rugby and uh, one of the things we did a few weeks ago, because we do rugby training, uh, which basically involves dropping the ball. Um, we do rugby training every um, every Thursday, um, every Thursday night. We've not been able to do that obviously for, for, for five or six weeks now. So a couple of weeks ago, we actually had a social uh, training evening on you know on on, on Zoom uh, and doing that. So again, just trying to connect, create and recreate and keep connection. The, the the next um, the next area is the the one of the emotional mental muscle. I spoke at the beginning, beginning about this idea of, of mental health. Um, and it's so in, it's so important. And I think one of the things, and what we're seeing really is within within this lockdown piece. Obviously, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure, and not all of us are living in ideal situations and ideal relationships, uh, ideal job. You know, working from home sounds great. I'm, I'm quite I've designed. I've got my home office. I'm pretty well set up. But there's people that are trying to do it. You know, kitchen tables. They've got young kids going around. My kids are old now. Yeah. There's a whole lot of stuff, and we all know there's a lot of competing pressures. There are relationships that aren't in great, great condition. There are people drinking too much. Um, there's all kinds of stresses that, that are there, irrespective of COVID, and now obviously they're amplified. So the emotional piece is really important. Mental health, I think, is increasingly seen as, a, as an important part of the work uh, conversation, which, and as it should be, and it's right too. Um, so how can we do that? I think being more open and honest about that. And I think we, we are able to have that conversation more, more often. Um, but if, uh, for, so me, for example, I've, I've got a couple, two, I've got two or three um, friends who I can actually talk with at a, at a real level. I think men, especially about it. This I know men, especially about it, this, um, you know, we tend to, Oh, what about the footy? What about the beer? And we kind of, we brush over the realities of the, the deeper, more meaningful conversations. Uh, so the emotional piece is, re is really important. And then the last one is the is the spiritual one, and that's, that's the idea of feed my soul. And this can be spiritual as in religious, uh, yeah, you may be a Christian or a Muslim or, or, or whatever, uh, or it can be like a pantheism, like a, a love of nature or some kind of spiritual, spirituality with the universe. Um, it just may be you just want to get out in nature and kind of connect and wonder what it's all about. I don't know what it is, but something in that that feeds your soul. Um, and that might be bushwalking, it might be kayaking on the ocean, it might, I don't know, any, any, any number of things. But it's another element, isn't it? And if we just need to make sure we've kind of got some stuff going on in that, in that world. Because often, either because we don't have the, we've not thought about it, or we often, and what I find with a lot of people I work with, is they, they put themselves last. So they might put everyone else first, and they, they find they don't find their own time to do these things. And it's very much to their detriment. And with a lot of this stuff, it's a bit, there's a bit of the kind of, you know, you need to put your own oxygen mask on first kind of thing. Um, because when we do this well, as I say, when, we're, when we are resilient, we're strong and we're able to help others. But if we don't fuel our own um, resilience, we're actually weak, weaker and we're less able to help. And the, in the middle of all this, as I said, sits that, that, that idea of perspective. Um, so you can actually see all of these elements together. And so I think a good, a good exercise uh, that you might want to do um, from, the, from, my, from my presentation today 
is yeah, have a look at these five areas and, and do your own quick health check. So have a look at them. Score yourself out of five for each of these things. How are you doing for family? You know, yes, physical. What are you? Are you a two? Are you a three? Or are you a five? You know, um, what are you doing well? And it's and you might find you know I've, I've I've pretty much got this. Or you might say you know there's some, there's a few things I need to fix up. And then once you've scored that, then 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 put three called three actions to take to move the dial. So I ran this exercise recently with another presentation and a, a, a lady afterwards, she contacted me and said, you know what, Mark, I was so grateful for you did that because what I realized is I'm doing everything with my kids and I need some time. I need to do it for a walk on my own without the kids where I'm not fussing over the kids so I can recharge, so I can refresh. Maybe I can talk, meet someone else at an appropriate distance, obviously, because that what that's what recharges us. And I think, you know, pulling this back into the leadership context and, and hopefully I'm explaining, you know, what, let's unpack. So this is about change leadership. We're saying change leadership. Obviously, there's some theoretical things we've spoken about, but change leadership, I say it's about resilience because you need, you need this energy. You need to be the energizer bunny. You need to be refueled and energetic. So remember, push, take people through that change curve. Now, right now, that change curve is very dramatic. And when we talk about things like depression and distress and denial, they have they take very large um, proportions, don't they? Because people are dying in hospitals. But even in times, people resist change, as we know. It might be at a lower level, but there's still resistance. So we still, as leaders, need to be strong and resilient to help push, pull, cajole, love, whatever people through that change curve. So. Really, I wanted to get across the idea that, you know, I call this stuff your self-work. So we lead ourselves first, this self-work, stuff like sleep, exercise, nutrition, relaxation, socialization, fun, all the things we've spoken about, learning. Um, and you might want to get a mentor or a coach. I do a lot of work with people in this area. Or you might want to get a peer support group. Because fundamentally, if we look at this model on the right-hand side, here, the self-work piece is actually foundational to personal performance and personal performance of course is foundational to team performance which is foundational to business performance and i think a lot of people get this wrong a lot of organizations get this wrong they say all this kind of stuff i've spoken about they, they, they would put it around the edge they said we've got we've got a business we've got performance we've got this stuff and we've got well they think like wellness or well-being and they'd sprinkle it around the edge like it's the salt or pepper that goes on the on the top and it's not and i think we're what we're seeing now and I've, I've known this for a long time I think, I think a lot of people have realized it, but what, what, what the whole COVID lockdown piece is showing is, you know, those leaders who aren't able to consistently prepare and condition themselves so they show up consistently well through this lockdown period, such that they're able to lead others, energize, you know, be optimistic, create a plan, you know, do all those things that you need to do. If, they, if you haven't done the self work, you can't do that. You can't do it consistently. You might do it for one week or a couple of weeks, but then if the, if the leader gets jaded or tired or a bit fed up and then the head goes down, that's no good. And that's why the resilience and the self-work piece is so important. So please understand the self-work resilience piece will make you money, if that's what you want to hear, because it's true. It will make you money and not doing it will cost you money. And I think we're seeing that really um, expressed um, very clearly now. Okay, moving on. We're into about the last 10 minutes. Uh, there's a, I know there's a lot of content here. You'll also get a copy of the, the slides, uh, which I'll share with Nicole. We'll put them on the resources because there's a lot of stuff here. As I said, I want you to have stuff not that kind of informs or entertains you. I want to give you stuff you can take away, pull apart, question, challenge, but most importantly, hopefully find a few elements of what we're talking about that you can put into your leadership that will help you to show up better in your real world today, both whether it's at home or, or when you when you go back to your offices or some version or variants of that. So there's a lot of information, but I'm hoping it's useful for you. So the, the third area of the Corona Leader model I'm going to talk about is thought leadership, and that's about influence. Really interesting, the whole, um, the whole uh, intact initiative um, really is a beautiful example of thought leadership. Because you know, you guys, you guys know it. You know what they do? They're facilities management experts, and they said, "Well, hold on, that's going on." But you know, there's a whole lot of other stuff that's coming out of this as well. We want to pull a whole lot of experts and kind of thinkers we've got together, and we want to kind of work out what does the next thing look like, uh, and how we're going to get there. And this is a beautiful example of thought leadership. They haven't said, "Oh, lots of our clients are closed down at the moment, so we don't know what to do." Okay? This is an example of thought leadership in action, making money, 
uh, and creating opportunity, creating connections, creating conversations. And bear in mind, um, yeah, if we're getting our sales heads on for a second, there is not a sale in the history of mankind that has not started with a conversation. So thought leadership and influence is a great way to start a conversation. Because more than ever, organizations need people to help us lead into an exciting, scary future. As I said earlier, we've got that, that real tension, haven't we, between this corona thing. It's scary on one hand, of course it is, but it's also massively exciting. Uh, and we've got, to, we've got to kind of hold those two, those two things um, in, 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 we've got to hold those two things together. The um, Scott Fitzgerald, a, a very famous author, American author, said that the mark of a first rate intelligence is, is to hold two contradictory, uh, contradictory ideas in your mind at the same time and still continue to function. This is really where we are with this exciting, scary thing. I think it's a really powerful idea. Um, we need people who can help us make sense of ambiguity, who can communicate with brevity and elegance. Brevity is so important right now. We, you know, we haven't got time. We're all, we've got to make sure we don't fill our heads up. Um, we need people who can attract people, resources, and sales. And we need people who can project confidence and purpose. That's the leadership part of this. So summing that up, leaders must become influencers, I believe. Um, and I'll just take you very quickly through this, this model and ask you this question, and it's a good thing for you to do afterwards, is plot where you are on this thing. Are you playing in the right space as a leader? So this this uh, this 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 uh, graph of this model, sorry, she has two axes. The horizontal axis goes from slow to fast, from past to future, from managed to lead, but also from before Corona to after Corona. And then the um, vertical axis goes from the very detailed, minute detail up to the bigger picture. And what we're basically saying is, um, if you know the bottom left of this, which is sort of de detail focused, kind of uh, in the past and sort of managerial phase, that's really the stuff. Things like data analysis, risk management, pattern recognition, that's the stuff that computers should be doing. So if you're spending much time doing that, you're not, you're not, you're not using your time wisely. Um, if we go to the top left of this, so now we're actually we a bit, bit, a little bit more strategic, a little bit more big picture, and as leaders, we need to be that. Um, and that's really where we're custodians of the, of the status quo. Yes, and that's about wisdom, status quo, us being experts. And I talked about expertise early, early expertise, what we know, relatively conservatively and focused on now. Now, those are important things. And, and as leaders, we obviously need to have an eye on what's kind of what's kind of been at the day to day, the stuff that's going out the door today, a product or something we're invoices from and that, that or invoicing from. And that's good. But the danger is, and the reality is so many leaders I meet anyway, they're not leading at all. They're actually managing because the custodian piece is really about managing. It's managing something that someone else, someone else at some point in time was a, was a, a created some new idea and project that ultimately has turned into a mature business that you are now managing. And our leadership has an aspect of managing. There's nothing wrong with managers. Please don't mishear me, but that's not leadership. That's not leadership. And what we're seeing now, of course, when fundamentally the, the whole old and new world have been ripped apart, boy, do we need leadership because we've got to work out what does the next part look like? What does after Corona, what does the post Corona world look like? And what does that mean? That means we need to move to the right hand side of this chart and influence. What are they? They go for their future focused. They ask questions like what if? Um, we go from being experts to being thought leaders. We go, we go from being very conservative to quite rebellious. And the focus is very much on the next, not the now. But we also, or and we also need to get it done. We need to not, it's not just thinking and strategizing. That's cool and we need to do that. But then we also need to what I call activate that. And that's about going from data to decision, from analysis to engagement, from risk management to risk taking. You know, and again, intact doing this, this could blow up, it could be terrible. No one might come, who knows? I don't think that for a minute that's gonna be the case. I think it's gonna be awesome. But this whole thing is a risk, right? And I love it, uh, but it is a risk. That's the idea, which we're tri trialing something and it, who knows what it's gonna to lead to. But it's a gorgeous project and a great example of appropriate risk taking. It's about disrupting accepted models. It's about this lovely idea of failing forwards. How are we going to possibly work out what the post-corona world looks like? Because we don't know yet. It hasn't been invented. We are inventing it. So we're going to make a few steps and failures aren't we, on the way. So trying to say, oh, we know everything and we're not going to make any mistakes is entirely the wrong way to go. So fundamentally, 
we're asking two questions, aren't we? Where are we going and how will we get there? And as I said, you know, I've, 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 this, this, this model has been around for a while, but now, we have, now we've got the, the pre, uh, the before and after corona kind of view on this. This model just gets amplified like times a thousand. So if you as leaders are not look, spending at least some of your time and a lot of your time right now on the right-hand side of this as influencers and activators, where are, we going, where are we going, where's the market, what's changed, and how are we going to get there, you are not leading. And you can't, as I say, hope, hope's a beautiful thing, but it's a crap strategy. So you really need to have, make sure you're doing some stuff there. So as I say, a good exercise for you to um, is, uh, do uh, at some point after this presentation is actually answer this question. Are you playing in the right space? And if you, your chances are, because gravity, process, habit, busyness will pull us down to the bottom left-hand side here. Small task, little, you know, emails, stuff, problem with a client, something's not being delivered, something's broken, that all of that stuff pulls us into the day-to-day -day and the busyness and the detail. And we need to, obviously, we need to create processes and systems that deal with that. But fundamentally, as leaders, we need to be striving to be on the right-hand side of this and then working out where are we going, how are we going to get there. Um, and activating your influence um, so, as, as a leader um, really quickly. There's five key elements that, uh, again, many or well, very few people do this. Very few leaders do this. Um, if I, I can't interact with you, but if I were to ask you the question, how many of you guys watching this are members of LinkedIn? I can guarantee probably 99% of you are. I'll put your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, LinkedIn's awesome. We're on LinkedIn. If I then ask you a second question, which is how many of you on LinkedIn are creating content and thought pieces, I know the answer is probably fewer than 10% of you, but probably more like 5% of you. So what that tells us is very few people on LinkedIn are actually creating content. And what that means is all you've really got going on uh, is you've got a digital version of your, your Word CV, yeah, your CV that you have in a Word document or a Pages document. Well, well done, you put it on LinkedIn. I mean, really, with everything that's changed, uh, irrespective of COVID, but certainly now we've got COVID, do you think that's really enough to, that, that all you've really done is taken a Victorian level kind of resume thing and you've now posted it online in LinkedIn? That's not enough, is it? It can't be enough. There is so much opportunity to bring your leadership to life. So how do we do that? Well, we do that by building a professional and personal brand that belongs to you. And that is very, and I've, I, I, very uh, markedly use both professional and personal go back to that model about the um, expertise experience and essence as i said those those we need to bring all of those things so our brand is both our professional brand but also our personal brand now i'm not i'm not saying you need to lead leave every bit of um every bit of um your personal life over your over over your professional life not at all but appropriate levels of sharing as i've talked about with some of my stuff with my kids and rowing and the rugby and stuff like that it just adds color and remember going back to that mosaic idea so we need to build a professional and personal brand um, when we do that why are we doing that from a professional perspective is when we do that we activate and build our network and tribe and the network is actually I and mean, we all know what a network is in a traditional sense but most of our networks are very ill-formed or immature they're very much industry job specific and we need to make them bigger than that we need to activate them, get more people into our network uh, and fundamentally want to attract a tribe, if you like, of people who get us, get our organisations, get what we're about and want to do business with us. This intact piece is a really lovely example of building a new tribe, isn't it? We've got a whole load of dislocated people. Some of us, some of us knew each other, most of us didn't. And we're all coming together and we this beautiful new tribe and, begin, and, and together we're going to kind of map our way out of out of where we are to, towards the future. I'm sure there'll be some commercial stuff going on. I mean, that's how stuff works, right? So this is a great example of thought leadership uh, developing a network and tribe. Um, how do we actually do the network and tribe piece? Well, there's several ways. I mean, obviously, the old-fashioned network is still good, but the real way is to go back to because we're in that social world now. Really, the really good thing to do is actually start to put some of our thinking and opinion out into the world. The obvious starting point for individuals and organisations is LinkedIn. As I say, most people do this so very, very poorly. They just don't do it at all. You know, just liking or the odd comment on someone else's post or sharing something that you've read from the financial review. I mean, you know, really? It's not, it's, it's better than nothing, but it's really, that's not thought leadership. You know, we, we need to, and I, you, you can see my, my um, logo there, we need to think, we need to do, we need to be more. And this is the think piece. 
So get our thinking and opinion out there, write some sh short pieces, uh, posts in LinkedIn are perfect. They're limited to 1300 characters. It'll take you 15 minutes to write. Do two or three of those a week. And suddenly, by the, before you know it, you've got a, you're starting new conversations, attracting new connections. Um, because when you do it consistently, you build a body of work. You know, it's a really a good question to know, to, for you now. If I were to launch, if I were land on your LinkedIn profile as an individual, what would I see? And would it excite me? Would it make me want to? Um, would it make me want to employ you? Um, so we really need to think about that. So body of work is really important. And then the last last aspect of this is that we need to build a um, our tone of voice. And what that's about is really showing up as who we are. That's being out. That's being out. That's being ourselves, um, and kind of being able to be natural uh, and not forced, uh, and be all be authentic. And uh, I mean, I've spent a lot of time myself getting to this point, and uh, it, it does take a lot of work. It's hard, uh, especially when you first come out of corporate or you're in corporate. It's kind of feels very clunky. But the ability to show up as who you are and just, you know, is, is and I, I always talk about this idea, it's a long journey back to being yourself. Because in organisations, we, we, we have so many constructs of political correctness and we can't say this and this is the policy that we kind of constrain and we constrict and we become like this. And we kind of, you know, it's very hard to actually show up. But when you can actually show up, shoulders back, confident as who you are, that's very powerful. And the, the tone of voice, so be natural, be, be who you are. Bring the colour of the way you think and feel and talk and speak into your communications. And that's a really lovely way of, as I say, building that professional and personal brand. And when you do that, activate it with content, bring it to life and build a body of work. You build that commercial network and tribe that is grows, grows, is good for the brand you work for, good for your business, and also good for you personally because you you own that. That that is portable. That 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 brand belongs to you. And whilst it reflects well in your employer, that's great, but it also is portable. So if you move on or go somewhere else or do different things, it's your brand, not just that, not just doesn't just belong to um, the organization you work for. And I think, you know, two possible futures in terms of those who are who become influencers, leaders, and those who don't. For the status quo, I think you risk becoming, becoming painted as irrelevant, analog, old, tired commoditized probably the few choices and and racing to create and, and facing going back that I, I that idea of vuca and uncertainty if we're an influencer though if we do the work i've spoken about which is a consistent piece that we do over time uh, we can become connected digital um smart energized we have the ability i think to earn and command premium premium dollars we have many choices and we have that lovely sense of possibility because we're yeah we're moving forward and again the people collaborating on this project are really good examples of that and how that can how that can play out. So the question is, which future are you choosing right now? And again, comes back to the pre-corona, post-corona, be your heroic self. We now have, you know, Kiros time. We have now have, don't we, that delicious opportunity to restart again and, and paint ourselves in a new way. So even if you haven't been a future-focused, thought-leading influencer kind of person, or you haven't been resilient or activated or really intentional about some of the things we've spoken about, you can start today and completely reinvent yourself, which is a lovely opportunity to start over. Because make no mistake, there are going to be people who will lose in the changeover from post -corona, pre -corona, pre corona to post-corona, and there will be people who win. I'd love you watching this to be part of the winners, being the winner's circle, a big part of that is putting in place some of the things I've spoken about. Um, I've also, in terms of a, a platform that can help you with the content creation piece, um, because of that very problem that so few people do this, I've, start, I've started a platform called the LinkedIn Accelerator Club. And what we do there is basically help you develop a content creation habit that drives leads, sales and connections and build your professional brand of influence along the lines I spoke about. Um, we do daily link sharing, group coaching, and it's $29 a month. Um, with a 14 day free trial. So there'll be some details around that if that's something that could be useful to you. But I tell you, so few people do this well, there's such an opportunity. So coming towards the end, uh, I know there's a lot of content, a lot of thinking for you to absorb, but five keys to starting today. The first one is actually to decide to start and decide means to kill or to cut off choice. Uh, we can kind of, we can exhaust ourselves, can't we? Going around in circles, well, I could do this and I could do this and I could do this and I could do that. Yeah, we need to decide. You need to make a decision. So you know what? I am going to commit to investing in my self-leadership. 
and that may say that it might be for you or for a bigger organization doesn't matter you can control that um you know we can control that we can't necessarily control if the organization wants to promote us or pay us that we can't control that bit necessarily but we can control the decision to step up as leaders and to develop our self-leadership the second piece is to aim low but to aim up we often defeat ourselves by trying to aim too high too fast and then we disappoint ourselves and then we stop so a good example of that is you know new year january the first i'm doing my new gym membership you know i'm a bit overweight but boy i've got i'm going to go to the gym five times a week and by the end of the end of january i'm going to i'm going to have lost 12 kilograms i'm going to be an adonis and i'm going to look amazing on the beach and of course what happens is yeah the first week of january there's still a few parties coming on for after christmas and then oh, so i don't go that time and then you get to the end of january of course you've been twice and one of those was just to walk around and be shown how to use the gear um you actually haven't lost any weight you probably put some on and then you say oh gyms don't work um and you stop doing it at all and so that's a good example so what we need to do is aim low so you know we might say for example in the in the uh in the context of creating content you know you might say i'm going to create one piece of post every one one post on linkedin every two weeks what you'll find is when you actually do a post a post will actually take you about when you start off it will take you 25 minutes to do then you're doing it oh that was quite easy you and actually a few people said something quite good about that and then you'll do it and then you'll find actually it's quite easy to write one a week and then you'll find actually it's quite easy to write two or three a week and so you're right rather than writing two a month you're writing 10 a month but aim low first and then by getting that sense of achievement and accomplishment we go hey i can do this we get more confident we get more we get more efficient and we move forward so aim low but aim up the third idea is to look for the tension i think one of the challenges we have as leaders is we can we can tend to like you know skirt around can't we the elephant in the room and not not challenge it but right now there are massive pieces of old pre-corona world thinking systems i don't know structures whatever they need tearing down because they're not fit for purpose anymore we need to create stuff that's going to be as i say going to be fit for that post corona world that we are in we are literally making as making as, as we stand here so we need to look for the tension and take on the hard stuff and then try to you know bite-sized chunks break it up and have it have it have, and, and tackle it the fourth one is to reawaken our curiosity and uh, i think that's a beautiful idea uh yeah because you know, kids kids are so curious aren't they if you've got kids you know they, they ask uh, i think there's that lovely lovely figure that um uh, like the average five-year-old asks about 300 questions a day uh, and then the average adult asks about five questions especially men we just stop asking questions we stop thinking we stop asking we stop doing the what-if piece so we need to reawaken our curiosity and then the last piece um, which is a lovely quote from the late great David Bowie and that's really just an, an evocation to you a, a call to arms if you uh, if you like find yourself and step out and that says if you feel safe in the area in which you're working you're not working in the right area always go a little further into your into the, always go a little further into the water go a little bit out of your depth and when you don't feel your feet are quite touching the bottom you're just about in the place to do something exciting uh so that's the end of my presentation you can probably hear my dog scratching on the door trying to come in uh, we'll let him in in a, in a minute but the last thing i want to share with you um that might be useful in terms of the thought leadership piece for you is i've got a, a free influencer test you can take uh, it takes about five minutes it's nine questions and when you answer that you'll you will let you know where you are on the asleep to awesome dial and you'll get a free personalized report as well that will tell you some of the things you can do to step up and build that professional and personal brand we spoke about um talked about linkedin accelerator club we'll leave you some details around how all that works and then if you want to get in contact have a conversation with me about any of the stuff i've been speaking about um mentoring thought leadership uh speaking facilitating whatever you want to have a chat about uh, there are my contact details so very happy to reach out to you and have a conversation if that's something that's of interest and now i think i'm going to throw back to nicole for a couple of questions great thank you so much mark that was truly inspirational um you definitely got me thinking you know about a number of factors and i can't wait to um to take the influencer test um look i think for me there's a there's a few key things there like we we've been forced to um you know to change 
it, it, it wasn't a choice of ours, it was taken out of our hands. So by giving people um, you know, that choice back to, to look at themselves in the mirror and to say, well, how do I choose to go from here? Where do I choose to go? How do I choose to, to adapt to this situation, to respond to that situation? I think that gives back that power and it gives back that control where you know we are creatures of habit but you know we, we do like to um to have that control over our own decisions over our, our own lives and when that's taken away it can be it can be a, a very daunting um situation um so i think that's absolutely fantastic um mark i mean like you know we, we've spoken a lot about change and we've spoken a lot about the future and and, and pre-corona um you know post-corona and I guess I've asked this question of a lot of people, um, completely differences of opinion. How do you see the working community transforming beyond today? I actually think, um, I think we, it's interesting. We need, I mean, the, the, one, one interpretation is, hey, isn't it efficient? Everyone works from home, you, you, you get massive, um, you know, everything digital, everything, you, you remove all, all kind of all the friction of transport and, and stuff, and wouldn't that be wonderful? But I think we're also seeing at the same time, and that's so that's true to an extent, we're also seeing at the same time that we're all kind of yearning, aren't we, to connect and hug people and, and just you know, have a yarn and share a cup of coffee and have a couple of beers or something. So we see that we need both things. So it isn't just about moving towards digital purity and efficiency. We need both. I think what we will probably end up with is a kind of hybrid model where people work from home some of the time. I think you'll see stuff where people um, might want to come uh, or teams might want to come together maybe a few times a week. But I think smartly if they do it outside of peak commute hours. So I can imagine a situation, say, look, we only need to come together, we need to come together twice a week. We'll do it from 11 till 2. And that means we can commute, uh, do some work from home first, commute in an efficient time, maybe a cheaper time, but certainly a more time efficient time, um, and do it that way. And then also, I think the other thing you might see in terms of working from home, I'm not sure it will necessarily be working from home offices, but I can see much, I mean, some one, one part of the world that I'm involved with is like the... Um, Oh, what are they called? The the um, you know the the the, the co-sharing the the the, the co co-sharing yeah, hubs. Yeah. Name from there. Really um, but those there. yeah those, those hubs where um co co-working sorry co-working hubs and clubs, I can see that the more of those rising up where you know first I don't want to actually be in my home office all the time. I want to go to a, a local co-working uh, space with maybe really good facilities, video conferencing facilities, maybe little studios because I think this kind of thing's going to be a lot. We can do a lot more of that. Stuff I can, so I've got, I kind of got a, I might have another local team who might not be anything to do with the team, the people I work for, but it gives them my own little cultural engagement piece. Uh, so I, I think some kind of hybrid model of that, I think would be, I can imagine as someone um, who, I don't commute at all anymore, but it's such a pain in the bum commuting. So I think it'd be a really good way to spread out the commuting, create the connection we still need, and also keep that efficiency. Because what we, what we are finding is there's so much, um, there are so many um, pr productivity upsides where people just don't waste so much time traveling to certain means. And I think, I mean, one of the, the key things certainly is and both from a cost perspective and also an efficiency perspective, people go, you know, yes, there are times when we need to meet face to face, but you know, we don't need to fly down from Sydney to Melbourne for that meeting. Some meetings possibly for sure, but there's, there's a lot of inefficiency that's been baked in when everything's been treated as the same kind of level of priority. And I think we'll think about what's the meeting about, what's, what's, why do we need to meet, what's the importance of it, and then what's the correct mode? Because the correct mode might, right, this is a big deal, first time we're meeting, important customer, we need to meet face to face. Thereafter, it might be virtual. So I think there's gonna be the blend, kind of a blended approach to all those things seems to me to be the best way of um, squaring that circle between digital efficiency, which we've seen, uh, the real digital uh, digital digitalization of the of the business, but also the necessary socialization that we need and crave, and also that we we need elements of that also in our in our professional relationships. So that's the kind of three axes kind of thing, I think. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I personally think we're going to have a much more balanced a balanced world. Um, I mean, look, if you think about how how many hours people spend in the office every day and then they're scrambling to get home, often, you know, commuting for an hour, stuck in stuck in traffic, and then they might just, you know, walk in the house to be able to put their kids to bed. They don't have 
um, you know, family dinners anymore. You know, they don't get time to actually put that exercise, um, you know, regime to, you know, in, in practice. Um, so I, I really hope that we do, um, you know, look at inwards a little bit more and give ourselves yeah. a little bit more love and ask ourselves the question, you know, what do I need? Because often we think about our, our family, we think about um, our, our work, but how often, you know, as you said, do we look in the mirror and really self-assess? And I think when we've been given this time, um, you know, we do have a little bit of time back. Now is an absolutely fantastic opportunity to really look at ourselves, really self-evaluate and really work out where do I want to go from here? You yeah. know, I'm either going to move with those times, um, you know, I'm going to ensure that I'm successful or, you know, as, as you said, I'm going to retreat and, and I'm going to wait for the landscape to change and then for somebody to come to me and tell me what to do. Right. But me personally, I want to create my own future. So yeah. I know that I will be, you know, putting into practice a lot of the things that you've, um, that you've shared in this presentation, um, you know, today, um, you know, to, to see how I can change and I can adapt and I can better myself as an individual um, as well. Lovely. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Nicole. It's been an absolute pleasure to be part of it and to talk with you today. Thank you so much, Mark. Really appreciate your time and, and your support and um, from behalf of the Intact Beyond team. Um, thank you so much.